Lake Superior, unforgiving, raw, and powerful. Comparable to ocean paddling, a canoe trip along the shores of the world's largest freshwater lake demands technical knowledge, skill, and a hearty dose of respect for the icy cold waters. It's a challenging, yet rewarding paddling experience that has tried even the best of canoeists, including Bill Mason and the Voyageurs. Departing from Hattie Cove in Puckasaw National Park, Leah and I would paddle 180 kilometers southeast along Superior's wild northern coast to the small harbor town of Michipicot. Flanked by rugged coastal mountains, boreal rainforests, and endless sandy beaches, this is the longest undeveloped stretch of shoreline on the Great Lakes. We would allot 10 days for the journey, factoring in Superior's wild and unpredictable weather notorious for shifting from impenetrable fog to high winds, big waves, and severe storms in a matter of minutes. All right, so it is the start of our 10-day trip down the Lake Superior coast through Puxaw National Park, down through the Superior Highlands to Michipicotten Harbor and Wawa, where we're gonna finish. We've only gone about 4K, and we're at one of the first campsites you can get to on the water. It's a bit luxurious here. We've got fire grill, there is a food cache for bears back in there, and the pit privy as well. Over the course of our trip, we're not gonna really have any of those amenities. We'll mostly be camping on desolate beaches and rock heads. Um, so, <laughs> we're gonna get a little bit of a feast on tonight. We've got some wine. Uh, we've got some steak, some shrimp, and some uh, seafood cakes as well. Uh, might as well get the trip off. Started with a nice big bang and a big old feast. So yeah, the water in this bay is like glass, but uh, out on the lake, there's still a bit of a chop when the wind's coming off the uh, land there. Anyways, great start to our trip. Uh, we're looking really forward to spending 10 days on the coast of Superior here. Today was a little nutty because we didn't get on the water till around 11.45. We had some pretty severe thunderstorms rolling through. Started around 3 o'clock overnight and continued to about 10, 10.30. Pretty powerful stuff. And then as we were out there paddling on the open waters of Superior, they really, really whipped up really quickly. Just checking out the map here. That bay down in there is everything. Is it getting a little better away from here or is it just me? I think we can make it. Aren't coming an ideal way either. So we decided to head to a little sheltered cove on White River and we took the portage overland and went up to the suspension bridge and the falls and did a bit of a hike as we waited for the lake to calm down. With all the tacking and in and out of the bays, it's probably going to be close to 180, 200 kilometer trip. It is absolutely gorgeous right now. A massive storm just went through. Definitely well worth the hike to come up here. The suspension bridge over the White River, this is just amazing. These falls are crazy. So one really awesome thing that we've been using this trip is this Northwater spray deck for our Novacraft uh, 16 foot prospector canoe in Tufts Up Expedition layup. This spray deck has been nothing but amazing out there handling the big waves and some of the spray that comes on from the side of those waves. We've been going through some huge rollers and everything has been dry in here. We've been dry as well. There's no water pouring into the boat so it's afforded us some extra stability. And it's been cutting through the wind like no other either. It just makes even packing and organizational space really, really easy. Really, really love it. It's an invaluable tool for our paddle down the Superior Coast.
All right, so we're here on Willow River right now. We've got this gorgeous beach site, and now it is absolutely placid out there. It's as flat as glass, and it's clouding over. We're supposed to get some more rain. Um, hopefully it holds off. We're just about to get dinner ready, but this is absolutely an amazing spot. Paradise right here. We've got gorgeous beach, dune grasses, nice tree canopy, and just the sheer rock walls of superior splendor. Gorgeous. Morning to day three, how you feeling? Nervous. <laughs> Why are you nervous? It's calm out there now. Yeah, but the winds are gonna whip up and the rain's coming, so I'm a little nervous about being on the open water. But it'll be good. We can just go into one of the coves if it gets a little crazy. Excited for tonight's campsite? <laughs> if we get there, yes, I'm very excited about tonight's campsite. And since it's like 7 a.m., we'll probably get there by 12 if it continues to be nicer, calm weather. Which will be nice because then we'll have all day to celebrate Canada Day. We can finally make a dent in our barrel full of booze. Should be good. We've been making pretty good progress today. The water's actually been fairly calm. Um, it's been pretty foggy, so navigation's been pretty brutal at times. Been having to rely on the uh, map and compass and the GPS. You're hearing the waves crashing off some of these high cliffs. You don't want to get too close to them either because you get the reflection waves that bounce off. You get some pretty beefy trough, even on uh, fairly calm seas like today out here. So you gotta your wits about you and stay further out in the thick of the fog and you only see about 20 meters around you. Falling through the fog is really creepy because you constantly, your eyes start to play tricks on you as well as your ears. So you keep thinking you're hearing waves coming from all angles and you keep thinking you can see shore ahead but it's really not anywhere near. Fog is so thick now. But at the same time, it makes the time go by really, really fast. So we'll do like 2K in what feels like 15 minutes, but really it's like 20 or 25 minutes. And it's been really, really, really pretty traveling along. We had some sheltered coves where we were able to go in and actually explore along the shoreline, go see if we could find any of the Puckaswaw pits, to no avail, unfortunately. But there's supposed to be some more along the Crownland area. So we'll check them out then. And uh, yeah, it's about 11.30 noon and we'll probably be at our campsite within the next hour and a half, two hours max. Which is exciting because then it's Canada Day so we can celebrate. We've got a big crossing of Wazo Bay. We could go in it and trace the coast but that adds an extra 5k. So we take a straight bearing and go about um, three kilometers across. We should be able to get to our campsite a little faster. It's about noon, we just had lunch on this gorgeous beach. The fog is dissipating right now. Ah, I see more rolling in off the lake over there, so hopefully it stays further out in the middle of the lake and we can have easier navigation as we cross Wazo Bay. So we'll see how it goes.
it's like almost one o'clock is the earliest we've ever been to our site we got a really early start today too so we're gonna poke down this bay there's a nice big sandy beach we gotta see the heat coming off the beach when you're going through these pockets of fog the temperature drops like 10 15 degrees but when you come out into some of these sheltered bays temperature is way up it's got to be like 25 degrees with humidity in these bays and like 10 15 degrees out on the open water superior really weird climates i saw one white pine today and a black ash which are really rare southern great lakes species up here in the heart of the boreal forest but lake superior creates these weird microclimates so some of these typically more southerly uh, growing species can persist up here. Really, really cool. Hey, what you got there? Uh, tiki cocktail riptide, blue Hawaiian coconut orange drink. <laughs> Still ice cold. Day three and our North Water barrel cooler has done its job. It's been pretty hot these past few days, really humid, and our drinks are still completely cold and it's lasted three full days. And I have a feeling it'll continue to be cold for at least another two. It fits perfectly into our 30 liter barrel. It would fit also in our 60 liter barrel. It's a two system where it has an inside bag that can keep it all waterproof as well as an outside one that's lined with kind of like a styrofoam. And then it has a further cooler top to lock in the cool air and moisture and temperature. So. Works out perfectly. This is our booze barrel for the trip for Canada Day. Glamping. Glamping at its finest. And we're having a nice Hawaiian cocktail for this beautiful oasis that we're in here on Lake Superior in Puckaswan National Park. Go Canada. We are glad we got off the water early today. It's uh, pouring buckets out there. But we're doing great because we're in our little uh, rain shelter here. We got the Eureka VCS 13 and the bug shelter because the black flies are just crazy. I was out getting some photos for about two seconds and I had like 200 of those suckers all over me. Nothing in here. She's gonna get pretty heavy in here pretty soon. Well, like I said, I'm very, 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 very happy that it waited until we got to our site. Yeah, we can sit on the beach and watch the storms come in. Well, we got everything we needed. We have our drinks. We have our food. What else? Give each other. <laughs> we got our still cold brews in our cooler barrel. <laughs> We can get dinner on the go in here too. We got some Mexican for the night. And yeah, nice and relaxing Canada Day watching the rain come in on this gorgeous white sand beach in Fisherman's Bay or Fisherman's Cove or whatever. A cove in Lake Superior. It is gorgeous. So hopefully it doesn't get any worse than this though. What day is it, three, four? Morning of day four, it's actually uh, around 10.30. We woke up bright and early around 5.30, but we heard some big waves crashing in here. We attempted to get out of the water around seven o'clock, but we only got about 500 meters out on this bay out here. And the troughs were about meter, meter and a half, so we quickly turned around. But we're not seeing all the white water breaking on the rocks out there. We actually hiked the trail uh, up to one of the lookouts up there get a better sense of the, uh, the water. Might be a little rough, but I don't think it's gonna be as bad as this morning when we were forced to turn around. Looking like a slight headwind, looking a bit of choppy, so it's gonna be a bit of a push today, but if the conditions are favorable, we're gonna try to get to Cascade Falls today. If not, we're gonna go to North Swallow Harbor. So we'll see what happens and we'll go from there. I'm glad we have a spray deck. 
Yeah, if it's like this, we're not going past the ramparts. Yeah, we're gonna tack into the shore right now. Much like white water. We got out there and the rollers were pretty high. They were about a meter and a half, getting pretty gnarly out there. And they were kind of quartering and peaking. I was getting a little chaotic out there. I can't believe it's so windy here yet. On shore, it feels so calm. We should have gone out around, eh? They're whipping up some pretty good waves in here. Oh, yeah, I see shoal off to our right there. Shoals everywhere. Shoals, man. I'm just trying to like, Slightly get us down the shoreline a bit. That's a bracer. Even if you were able to power through some of those big troughs, you're not going to make much progress at all. As long as they're the timing is like that, we're good. When the period gets too close, that we have to worry. With that headwind, it's about 25 to 30 knots at times, so it's pretty dicey out there. And there's a wind warning in effect too, so hopefully that diminishes. It's supposed to be done by midnight. Coming in is worse than going out with it, eh? Well, oh, these waves are not ideal for coming in. We're going the other way. Brace it. It's up. Windbound day. We only made it about two and a half, three k today. We just opted to come into one of these bays and it's a good thing we did because the wind really whipped up after that and now we're looking out there we actually did a bit of a hike uh, to get a vantage point and there are white caps all over uh, the water is breaking into the rocks at quite a force So we set up camp in this tiny little uh, tidal valley, I guess you could call it that. There's this tiny little gorge that runs between these two bays and actually to paddle around it is about 400 meters. So we just portage the canoe through this little gorge, shaved off 400 meters of paddling for the trip. But yeah, it's kind of nice. There's some old growth cedars here, some nice rock walls, and it's pretty evident that someone actually has camped here before as well. So we're not really sure as to the why and the how of that, but there's some Evidence of that from some saw marks on some of the trees here and a nice flat area so it makes a perfect shelter but it's really hidden in here. You'd have to get windbound or stormbound in one of these bays to really find this so we're thinking someone else in the past got stormbound here as well. A little crazy. Okay, so it is seven o'clock. We have not seen a break in the wind whatsoever. We checked the uh, marine forecast and it's not supposed to really dissipate until about midnight. Uh, you still get some occasional gusts. We're looking at some of the breakers. They do look like they're going down, but those rollers are still pretty beefy killing in there. So that's looking like we're gonna hunker down here for the night, set up camp, make some dinner and uh, enjoy ourselves. But man, the black flies have been absolutely horrendous the last couple nights. Bad black flies. I can't believe this is July. The good news is most of them aren't biting if you're covered up here, so we're not putting on the bug jackets right yet. Not even set up the bug shelter, but they're just crawling all over the place. So as long as you cover up pretty much most of your body, you're okay, but they've been just nuts for July. Crazy amount of black flies. We'll see about tomorrow. We'll hopefully get the big 30 kilometer day into Cascade Falls and see how it goes. That is the plan. If the wind doesn't uh, die down, in the next little while, we're just gonna hunker down here for the night. So, let's see how it goes. Day five, we have finally got out on the water. 
It's gorgeous early morning here. We're by a refuge island and the humidity is insane again. It's like 75 to 80%. The lens fogs up every single time I try to get a shot. It's like paddling in a tropical rainforest out here, except it's cooler. <laughs> At times, sometimes it's hot. Down the coast we go. Hopefully we get to Cascade Falls today. Looking pretty good so far. We got some fog clinging to the coastal mountains over there. It really creates its own weather zone out here. It's really nutty. Like inland can be 20 degrees and a light wind and out here it could be 15 degrees and 40 kilometer hour winds, but it can also be super humid. Everything in there is lush and moist. Some of the cedars and the ferns look really like BC and with these coastal mountains coming out, can't really do it much justice from the video perspective out here, but they're jutting up about 300 to 400 meters at times, and it's pretty impressive. When the wind whips down there, it creates some really interesting conditions. kilometers later we have caught up to our destination we are at Cascade Falls absolutely gorgeous set of waterfalls flowing right into Lake Superior and there's this awesome beach to camp at right beside there where we're gonna enjoy the rest of the day and relax after battling headwinds all day Shall we paddle into shore and find a spot to camp? Sweet, let's do it. These are called tri bags from Northwater Paddle Sports and Equipment. And essentially, they're these semicircular, triangular shaped bags, and you come with three of them. The tops are color coded. You got a yellow, you got a brown one, there's a blue one in here as well. And they have a label, so you can slide in a piece of paper or whatever you want to write on, put in what you've got inside of here. So this one is breakfast and cutlery. And if I open it on up, what I'm going to find? Well, cutlery, breakfast, all that stuff. So it's made organization on this trip really, really, really easy. No longer you gotta dig through your barrel to find what you want. Uh, this is a 60 liter barrel. Three of these fit in here perfectly on the bottom and it only takes about half the barrel. But that's pretty much all our food. We're out here for 10 days and I dehydrated a lot of my food and still I haven't fit up these dry bags to the fullest amount. Uh, lots of extra room in here for our pot sets, any other fresh things that we want to throw in here. But yeah, these are great, easy to use, awesome stuff from Northwater. That's tonight's dinner, shepherd's pie. Awesome, hearty cooked meal after a lovely day of paddling out there. Camped here at uh, Scenic Cascade Falls. This is just absolutely amazing. Really simple. I've got my filling that I did up at home. 
then I've got my instant mashed potatoes that I'm gonna layer on top. This is easy peasy backcountry shepherd's pie. This is actually gonna make a lot. It's a good thing we paddled uh, 30K and strong headwinds today because we are gonna be hungry. Are you excited for dinner? I'm so excited. Shepherd's pie and wine. Wait, we still have wine and it's day five? Oh yeah! <laughs> it's glamping. No portages equals bag of wine. Yeah, potatoes are going everywhere. <laughs> Is a backcountry shepherd's pie. Look at that. So Leah said cakes. We are celebrating Canada Day with rainbow cake. Canada's diversity, rainbow colors. <laughs> Delicious. It is a gorgeous calm morning here on Lake Superior. Unfortunately, we're leaving <laughs> the best campsite behind at Cascade Falls. It's pretty calm out here right now and checking the marine forecast, it looks like Friday is gonna have winds of uh, 20 knots from the northwest, so we could be windbound on that day. It is only Wednesday, so we've got lots of time ahead. What we're gonna do right now is try to get ahead of schedule. Today I only had about a 20 kilometer day, fairly easy, just to keep in mind of those windbound days, but I think we're gonna try to push 30, 35 if we can today. We'll see how it goes. It really was one of the best sites we've ever stayed at. start right now it's just after uh, 6 30 waters like glass there's a nice fog on the water too absolutely gorgeous paddling conditions out here beautiful what do you think about that Leah what do you think about that Leah I think it's beautiful feels like we're in the ocean <laughs> how's the morning going so far it's been going really well it's like Barely any waves, just a nice headwind to keep the bugs and the temperature in check. And uh, it feels like we're on like a glass, glass ocean paddling along. So it's beautiful, couldn't have asked for a better day.
Paddling down the Puxaw Coast, there are a number of examples of what they call Puxaw Pits. And they are these ancient pits uh, made by First Nations. We're not really sure how long ago, but uh, roughly 1,000 to 1,500 AD. And there are these pits that are situated about 30 feet up on these old raised beaches. The uses of them is really unknown. Could have been places to fast for vision quests, could have been hunting blinds, food storage pits. There's many theories out there, no one knows for certain, but they're pretty special seeing these ancient rock pits still standing with a gorgeous view of Lake Superior out here. It's a pretty magical and uh, moving area. Don't touch it, don't enter it. Just take a look and paddle on by. What a gorgeous day to paddle. Absolutely amazing conditions out there on Lake Superior. After five days of mixed bag conditions, finally have water like glass. the old ghost town of Puxaw Depot and it's in this gorgeous harbor here overlooking Lake Superior. Now at its heyday there was a bunch of buildings and a lot of people um, lived and worked in this community but now it's abandoned and there's only uh, one crumbling building left and the foundations of a few others as the forest is slowly eating it up. Hard to believe that at one point there was a bustling and vibrant community isolated all the way out here in the middle of Lake Superior. All right, we have arrived at Paradise. This is Wheat Bin, which is a ginormous beach out here on Lake Superior, all to our own, no one else around for miles and miles. Endless sweeping views of just nothing but open horizon. Really does feel like we're in the tropical Caribbean islands or something like that. Anyways, awesome, huge beach. It just stretches all the way around here and curves about. It's probably about 500 meters long at most. And we did a bit of extra paddling today. Went a little further than we wanted to, which is perfect because we actually did want to get ahead of schedule. And now we've got this glorious beach all to ourselves here. So Brad and I really like to have a couple of beverages while we're out canoeing after a long day. And on long trips like the one that we're on right now, which is about 10 days, it's kind of hard. Um, to lug around beer and wine for uh, the duration of the entire trip. So one of the solutions we'd use is we'll bring spirits with us. So what I'm making today is a pocket cocktail that I bought from the Man Camping website. And they're little pocket cocktails that are dehydrated. And all you have to do is add water and your spirit of choice. So the one that we're using today is margarita mix. So we brought tequila and some fresh lime. What you do first is you add some of the liquor. Now it says an ounce, but we like our drinks strong, so I'll just fill it till I feel is good. And then you add the pocket mix, and now the pocket mix has a line, a fill-up line. So um, what you do is you fill it four times to equal a cup in case you don't have a cup with you, but we actually have cups, so I don't need to use this. But for those who pack super light, it's also a really nice solution. Next you add some water. And just stir it up. <laughs> nice juicy lime. So now you have a taste of the Caribbean out in the middle of Northern Ontario. And voila! Cocktail on the beach. About four more days left. Cheers.
well worth the extra kilometers to get ahead schedule and get to this fantastic slice of paradise here. We're gonna enjoy the afternoon, kick back, relax. Who knows what we're gonna do? It's just gonna be an awesome day hanging out on the shores of Lake Superior here, home private beach. Well worth the battle. What a nice sunset. Good morning. It is the dawn of day six. It is a glorious foggy morning out here on Wheat Bin. We are outside of Puxaw National Park. We are now on a portion of undeveloped coastline going towards Mitch Picotten Harbor. It's about 80 more kilometers of this whole 180 kilometer stretch. We haven't seen any sign of human development besides the old lighthouse at Otterhead Island way out in the distance. Really remote out here. We've only seen one other kayaker and another group of canoeists yesterday, actually around the Dog River, Puckasaw Depot area. But other than that, in our whole time out here, it's been just private, all to ourselves. Hopefully the weather holds off and we can make good progress today. Making our way along the coast of Superior here, through some thick fog, but thankfully the winds are down. It's a little chilly with those droplets, but it is a gorgeous morning out here. middle of a thick fog here on Superior and we're crossing one of these bays and it's just thick everywhere so if you're not on your um, your bearings and you're not following a compass bearing it could get easy to get turned around and go farther out to the lake in the middle of nowhere so you really got to watch yourself as you're paddling through some of these really thick fog conditions. because this is a little shallower bay we can hear water splashing off to our right off to our left so we know lands all around us but some of these bigger crossings that are like a kilometer long through straight fog it's pretty difficult through some thick fog on Superior, but at least she's nice and calm. Tobacco offering to the Puxaw Pit for a safe passage. Thank you. 
As we were out there, there was getting some nasty white caps. We were getting some pretty big swells that we were surfing on our way in. That's a big one. Shoals here, that's why they're big. Nice. Nice. Ooh, the shallows, eh? The problem is the waves are pushing us into them. And there's white caps all out there, so it's like, ugh. There is a stretch of rocky outcrops for about 5k with no landings and as that wind is really ripping up, probably not the safest idea. If something did happen, there's really no safe landings. It would be a dash canoe against the shore situation. Heads up. Great. Heads up again. Yeah. Might be a little rough through here. I wanted to miss that rock. Awesome job. Nice. Woo, that was a digger. We've arrived at Floating Heart Bay. It is absolutely gorgeous here. We decided to stop here um, after pushing through for about four and a half hours of paddling, doing about 27 kilometers today. It's this gorgeous sandy beach with this Caribbean feel with this turquoise greenish water. White caps were really whipping up out there. We were going through some huge swells. Um, they weren't cresting on the deck, but they were getting pretty close. So you had to uh, had to keep your skill set pretty sharp going through some of that stuff. We wanted to get a little further today, but actually we're still ahead of schedule by about 15 kilometers based off the float plan that I originally had come up with. So it's pretty good. You know, no sense in pushing an extra couple kilometers today. Wake up early like we always do and tackle it in the morning. Besides, we've got this awesome beach to enjoy here. Absolutely paradise. We've got an entire day, afternoon rather, just to hang out and enjoy Floating Heart Bay. Perfect spot. Well, it's just after 5 a.m. We're getting an early rise here today. We've got another 25 to 30 kilometer paddle ahead of us if we want to get towards the Dog River. Uh, we do have to round uh, Point Issachor, which is one of the three um, feared points on this stretch of coast between um, Sault Ste. Marie and at least Marathon, the other two being Cap Chalion and Point de Canadienne. Now, we rounded Point de Canadienne two days ago after we were leaving Cascade Falls, and it was actually quite easy going. We've rounded Cap Chalion last summer when we were paddling up the Superior Provincial Park coast. It's calling for some wind warnings later in the day as well too, so we want to get a really early start so we can hammer out those kilometers and get around that dangerous point. A lot of reflection waves kick up there and the wave action can be pretty strong. So we want to get that early start, get out there while the water's calm. And a bonus, we'll get to our site pretty early and have lots of time to explore Denison Falls on the Dog River. Kind of neat because the sun keeps just like reflecting off your blade and stuff. Yeah. So we made good progress this morning. We've already gone about 10.2 kilometers. Starting to warm up. It was a little chilly. Um, but we're about to round Point Issachor. 
It's a big cliff face jutting out in the water. And then for a five kilometer stretch past that, there really aren't any landings. Thankfully, the lake is really calm this morning. So hopefully it stays that way for at least the next 45 minutes to an hour as we round this treacherous stretch of coastline here. See how it goes. Gorgeous thus far. Today, so we can actually like look at it and stuff too. That's something else though. Absolutely amazing conditions out here. So gorgeous. We really lucked out with the weather today. Almost at Dog River, about five more K. This is bliss. So we have made it to the mouth of the Dog River where we're camped for the night. And we're now taking this trail from our campsite. It's actually a pretty well marked trail, but there is some lowdowns and stuff on the way. Anyways, we're going to Denison Falls on the Dog River, which is a very impressive cataract. The river's starting to get a little louder, so I think we're getting closer. We've been hiking now for about 25 minutes and it's been a pretty scenic trail so far. So there's just a lot of little sets of rapids as we're hiking along this trail. But we've almost come about 2.5 K and I think this trail is about three kilometers, three and a half kilometers long before we get to the falls. You can just start to hear the thunder of the falls just in the distance. So I think we're starting to approach it now. Sounds pretty big. Pretty neat to get off the water and on the on our feet for a while here. Ah, look, it's so cool if there was like hot springs. That's a pothole. We're having fresh pike for dinner tonight. That is a good sized pike. We'll get some lovely steaks off that guy. Delicious. So on this one, we've got some fish crisp fried pike. We got some onions in there as well. And on the reflector oven, we've got some baked pike going in there with some lime, garlic, and onions. So we got two different types of pike dishes going on here. It's a lot of fish. We got some 
cheesy ricey noodle mixture as well for the sides. It's gonna be a feast for a long, hard day of hiking and paddling. So it passes the Leah test. Fresh meat is nice. Change after dehydrated meat for the past nine days. I don't know why more people don't cook pike. It tastes exactly like white, white fish. It is a gorgeous morning here, start of day nine. A little late start today because the forecast calls for calm seas and it's supposed to be hot and sunny. So we slept in a bit, had a big breakfast, did up some bacon eggs, scrambled mix there, really delicious. So we're rested up. We don't have too far to go today, about 17 kilometers before we get to Door Beach, Door Point area. And then our last day is gonna be an easy 10 kilometers hopefully we don't want to do as much distance on that last day just in case the weather picks up we're pretty close to the end it's a little bittersweet but yeah hopefully today goes fairly smoothly looking forward to some glorious paddling on lake superior Can't get over this awesome, amazing weather. We've just come across the Mountain Ash River, and as we're nearing Mitch Picotten Harbor, we're about 25k away from there. But it's this gorgeous little, tiny little oasis of a harbor. Water is frigid, but there's a nice little waterfall that comes down. Very gorgeous spot. Spots like this all over the coast. If the water wasn't four to five degrees, you'd think you're in some lush tropical environment. It's absolutely breathtaking out here. So one thing we really noticed as we're getting closer to Michipacotten Harbor is that the landscape is changing. This final about 30 kilometer stretch after we rounded Issachar and went by some towering impressive cliffs, the land's flattened out quite a bit and there's a lot of these shallow bays with this gorgeous white sandy beaches. Awesome spots to beach the canoe, pitch a tent, relax in the sun, it's like Wilderness paradise. It's just, words can't describe how gorgeous this is. Absolutely amazing. And on a hot day like today, this is our little slice of heaven. It's been quite an experience paddling from Pucksaw National Park to Mitch Picotten Harbor. It's unfortunately our last night here on Lake Superior. We're just camped at the mouth of the Door River. We've got this gorgeous set of waterfalls behind us. We're camped on this really nice high gravel bar. A kind of fitting end as we're watching the sunset go down over the lake uh, for our journey. It's been one unforgettable experience and it is a trip that every paddler, if your skill set is up, should experience. Just amazing had a great time out here.
Last day on Lake Superior, we are going to leave the Dora River behind and paddle to the Michipicotten Harbour at Naturally Superior Adventures. It's only about 11 kilometers. It is a bit of a grey day today and there is some surf crashing in on the shore here. Actually a strong wind blew in overnight. Um, so there might be some rollers out there, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Uh, like I said, it's a bittersweet ending to this trip. It's been nothing but amazing so far. We've had a great time. Should be a pretty easy paddle, hopefully if the weather holds out for us, and we'll end up there on the shores of Michipicotten Harbor. One awesome trip so far. Wowzers, so we just rounded uh, Perk Point there, or Peak Point, not really sure. Anyways, needless to say, it's this big point of land that just juts out for about a kilometer, and with winds they were today, there was some um, pretty big swells going through there. It was just nitty gritty, white knuckle bracing going around that. Anyways, we're at this old abandoned lighthouse facility now, and the bay behind us here looks pretty calm, so hopefully it should be moderately smooth sailing into Natural Superior Adventures at Mitch Cotton Harbor. How you feeling, Leah? Tired. My arms are gonna fall off. It's a little scary going around that point. The falls are pretty big. So yeah, last day of Superior, they really make you work. So. But we have a big meal coming, which will be really nice, and it's been a really good 10 days. We made it. End of an awesome trip on Lake Superior. A little wavy out there, but we're here at Natural Superior Adventures, safe and sound. What a fantastic 10 days on Lake Superior.